Um, so uh, my apologies for the late start. Uh, we unfortunately had a massive uh, distributed denial of service attack against uh, our servers and uh, <laughs> saturated all of our, all of our uh, data lines, like basically hundreds of gigabits of, of data were saturated. Um, we've, uh, we think we've overcome most of that. And uh, so it, it's uh, now time to proceed. But um, as, as this, uh, this massive attack illustrates, uh, there's a lot of opposition to people just hearing um, what uh, President Trump has to say. And um, so, but I, I'm honored to have this conversation. I wanna emphasize it's a, it's a conversation. Um, and it's really intended to just get, get a feel for what Donald Trump is just like in a conversation. Um, it's, it's hard to catch a vibe about someone if you just don't hear them talk in a normal way. And when, you know, when there's, when there's an adversarial interview, like n no one's themselves in an adversarial interview. Um, so for, and, and this is really aimed at uh, kind of open-minded, independent voters who, um, I was trying to make up their mind. Uh, and uh, so you can understand like what, what is, uh, you know, what is it just like to have a conversation? So um, uh, honored to, it, it, Donald, great, great to, uh, to speak. Um, we, we had a, a great conversation yesterday, as, as you mentioned yesterday, if, if we could just record that conversation and post it, it would have been excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I hope we can have something like that today. Well, I think we will. I'm pretty sure we will. And congratulations, because I see you broke every record in the book with uh, so many millions of people. And it's an honor. We view that as an honor. And then uh, you do want silencing of certain voices. Usually those are voices that have something to say that are constructive, oftentimes <laughs> constructive. And yeah. uh, so we have to consider it an honor. But congratulations on breaking every record in the book tonight. That's great. Well, thank you. Um, well, I mean, maybe uh, we, we could start off with, um, I mean, the assassination attempt, uh, which uh, w w was an incredible thing. And I have to say that, uh, you know, your actions after that, mass, that, that assassination attempt were inspiring. Um, you know, you, instead of shying away from things, instead of ducking down, um, you were pumping your fist in the air and saying, fight, fight, fight. And I think that's, I mean, you know, the, the, the president of the United States represents America. And I think that is, that is America, that is, that is strength under fire. And um, so that's, uh, you know, a, a big, a, you know, a part of the reason why I was uh, excited to endorse you as uh, the, the, the president of the United States for have, having another term here is uh, that was, that was just incredibly inspiring. But, but I mean, what was it like for you? Not pleasant, I have not to be honest. Pleasant. I said it was blood. I had Being more blood. I didn't, know I, had, I didn't know I had that much blood. The doctors <laughs> later told me that the ear is a place that is uh, a very bloody place if you're going to get a hit. But uh, in this case, it was probably the best alternative you could even think about because it went at the right angle. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a hard hit. It was very... Uh, you know, I moved down pretty nicely, pretty quickly, and we had bullets flying right over my head after I went down, so I'm glad I went down. The The bigger miracle was that I was looking in the exact direction of the shooter, and so it hit, you know, and uh, all because I put down a, a chart on immigration that showed that the numbers were so great. I, I love that chart even more now. I mean, maybe it's a sign. It. <laughs> maybe yeah. that's a sign, you know. <laughs> it's an immigration sign. You, you highlighted a, a serious issue. And, yeah. and at that moment, the, the, right. the, the bullet missed your, you know, hit your ear, but, but, but you know, missed, missed, missed your, your head. I mean, your, Well, you the, know, the, the amazing yeah. thing is that uh, the sign, I said, bring down that sign on immigration. And such a sad situation. As you know, we lost somebody that was great, Corey, yeah. who, a firefighter, a, a, a great gentleman, a great, a great trumper. He was a, a, just a fantastic family and a fantastic man. And a friend of mine came up. Elon and said, I'd like to give uh, the family some kind of uh, help. And I said, right, that's great. He said, do you mind? I said, I don't mind at all. And he wrote out a check for a million dollars, gave gave it to the wife. She said, this is really nice, but I'd rather have my husband back, which is a nice thing for sure. somebody to say, to be honest. She's she's great. The family is great. 
And we raised a lot of yeah. money for them and for uh, two other gentlemen were, are unbelievable people also. They were hit really badly. They thought they were not going to make it, and they did. The doctors in the Butler area, I tell you, they were incredible. They saved the two, and uh, they were really hit tough, both of them, equally. Yeah. Uh, and we thought, yeah. we. I, my first question was because I heard bullets flying over me, and I said, how many people were killed? Because we had a massive crowd there, a tremendous yeah, thousands and thousands of people, and and there was no land. I mean, it was just it was all people. So I said, "How many people have been killed?" Because I knew there were other shots being fired. And, sure. And they said, uh, "We don't know yet, but some people have been badly hurt." I have to give the uh, Secret Service a sniper, they call him, or sharpshooter, but sniper, yeah. because he didn't know there was a problem. Uh, he's been he's an extraordinary shot obviously, and he didn't know there was a problem. And he yeah. was able to pick it all out within five seconds. And he used one bullet from very far away, I guess probably about 400 yards. The shooter was 130, but he was on the uh, yeah. uh, he was on the opposite side of the field and the podium. The smoke and the flame from the gun immediately recognized it and immediately took a shot. And it was one perfect shot from very far away. And, and and all of a sudden, he has to act. And it's a very tough thing to sure. act and to be shooting somebody. And it was They say it was approximately five seconds from long range, yeah. one bullet. If that didn't happen, because yeah. the shooter had a lot of bullets. He had a lot of a lot of cartridges sure. up there with him. So well, it would have been very... I mean, I mean that, 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 that's clearly, uh, uh, you know, um, you know he, was, he was very confident in taking that shot uh, to stop the... the the assassin, the attempted assassination. Um, I think most people like are want, people are wondering how that how on earth could such a thing happen. Well, you know, I view it as two ways. Uh, there should have been nobody on the roof. Uh, there were people yeah. because there were so many tens of thousands of people there. There were people that were seeing him, and there was one woman with a red shirt, right. Trump all over it, and, she, and she's screaming, well, "That guy's got a gun!" You know, you saw it probably. How the heck are, you know? Basically, p people wandering by, pointing out there's a guy on the roof with a gun. Yeah. Um, and they're seeing it, but uh, somehow that's it's not being addressed. Um, that that does seem yeah. crazy. Well, they they're going to learn from this. The uh, communication between the local police, who sort of had an idea, and then ultimately a man lifted himself up to the roof, could barely do it because you know he was pulling himself up. He fell down. And he did, you know, from what I understand, he did say there's a guy up there with a gun. And the the shooting started very quickly after that. I think it I think it forced the shooter to go maybe quicker. You know, you're supposed to be a very good shot. Yeah. My sons, uh, Don and Eric, they, they can't believe what happened. But they said from 130 yards, a bad shot would hit that target almost every time. They said it's like in golf, yeah. sinking a two-foot putt. Yeah, it's it's not a hot, it's not a no, tough shot. It's not a it's um, not a long shot. The uh, Secret Service person had the long shot. He had a you know triple the yeah. distance actually. So uh, you know it's it was a a terrible thing. It, look, uh, it's it's hard. I have to say this about the Secret Service. When I went down, when guns go off, and it does happen in stadiums at a soccer match or some kind of a match, everybody flees. They call it a stampede, like cattle. But everybody, and a lot yeah. of people get killed with those stampedes. Uh, we had sure. more people than you'd have at, you know, some of these matches or, or these games. And and it's almost like they wanted to be with me. Well, out front, you had thousands, tens of thousands of people. You, as far as the eye could see, you had people in Butler. And, uh, yeah. and a lot of press, too. There were, you know, many cameras on watching this. It's what made makes it so different, because normally things happen that aren't good but you never have a picture of it. Here we have all these cameras shooting it. He, uh, well, he sort of missed. I mean, you know, he, uh, yeah. he, but he got said, me, he, but he it could have been, it I mean, could have been, uh, could have been a yeah. much bigger problem. Well, uh, it was, uh, your, your, I think, uh, your, your, um, actions in the, in the heat of a uh, fire and, you know, like, what I find admirable there was that you you can't fake bravery under such circumstances. The courage is instinctual, or it is not. It's not a rehearsed action. And so I just want to say that uh, I think a lot of people admire your 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 courage under fire there.
And um, yeah, so thank you very yeah. much. I, I appreciate it. I didn't. I don't think. I didn't think of it. I just wanted to get up, and I wanted to stand up. I wanted to let people know. You know, I felt I was good when when they were uh, on top of me, covering me. Actually, very much covering me, and and very bravely. But uh, I wanted to get up. I said, I want to get up, and uh, they wanted. You know, they had. They have everything there. They have. Uh, they wanted stretcher. I didn't like the stretcher. And I knew I was hit in the ear, but I knew I wasn't hit anywhere else. They felt I was hit someplace else because yeah. it was such a, a lot of blood. Was I alive? You really couldn't tell. When I stood up before the hand, before the, you know, the fist in the air, uh, they didn't know if I was alive. Nobody did. And uh, when I put the fist up, they were, they were just relieved and happy and thrilled and the place went crazy it was pretty amazing yeah. it was a it was a terrible well, was, thing but it was, it was a, incredibly, incredibly, nice. just incredibly moving yeah um well and and i mean speaking of the the the, the, the sort of slide that got you to turn that uh, saved your life really uh which was the illegal immigration uh, slide right. Maybe this. That's right. Maybe this is worth talking about. About that. Since, it was. It was. <laughs> that slide. That slide saved, saved right. my life. No, the illegal immigration saved my life. You're right, but it, was, <laughs> it had to be at that exact good. angle. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a great one. You had to be exactly at that angle, but but the incredible yeah. thing is that the chart I used it less than twenty percent of the time. That normally you wouldn't use it. Normally I wouldn't have the thing, and then you know yeah. it would have been a very different story. It's, it's very much, I I say, an act of God. It's a miracle that it happened, and I'm honored sure. by it. I'm honored by it. Well, well, what 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 what, what were you, what were you about to say about illegal immigration before you were rudely interrupted? Well, bullet? I was going to say how good the numbers were. By the way, we're going back to Butler, and we're going to Great. go back in October. We're all set up, and we're the people are fantastic in Butler. It's a big. It's a great area. Great. These are incredible people. Have, have no matter. Elon, the chart <laughs> was just a chart that in my last week, we had the best uh, illegal uh, immigration numbers, meaning stopping. Uh, it was at the lowest. You've seen the chart. It's become a, quite a famous yeah, chart. Yeah. But that was yeah. the lowest yeah. point ever recorded. I'm gonna, I'll be sleeping with that chart. That chart was, uh, was very important, very important for a lot of reasons. Well, I mean... I mean, would it be accurate to would it be accurate to say that you're supportive of legal immigration, um, but that we, but we also need to shut down illegal immigration uh, and especially unvetted illegal yes. immigration because you you know and 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 that's that's not the same as saying that everyone who's an illegal immigrant is bad. In fact, um, I, I think most people who are illegal immigrants are actually good. But but you can't tell the difference unless there's a solid vetting of who comes across the border. Does is, is, does that does that accurate, accurately represent your position? I, I say okay. it very simply. They have to come in legally. They have to be checked. Yeah. Because, look, Kamala was the border czar. Now she's denying it. Everything that I do, <laughs> she's, she's saying yeah. she was strong on the border. And we're going to be strong. Well, she doesn't have to say it. She could close it up right now. They could they could do things right now. It's, it's horrible. Uh, no tax on tips. And all of a sudden, she's making a speech. And, say, and there will be no tax on tips. I said that months ago. I believe it's over 20 million people came into our country, many yeah. coming from jails, from prisons, from from uh, mental institutions, or a bigger version of that is yeah. insane asylums, and many are terrorists. And I'll tell you what, they're, they're coming not just from South America, they're coming from Africa, they're coming from all over the world, they're coming from Asia, yeah. they're coming from the Middle East, they're coming from countries that are uh, stupidly and horribly bombing Israel October 7th. They're coming from all over the world. They, and, and, you know, you look at, it's so sad October 7th because it should have never happened. Yeah. It's so sad sure. when you look at Ukraine. It should have never happened. We have a defective yeah. government. These are defective people. And they're not people that should be running it. But where you see it the best is the border because you had, you have millions of people coming in a month. And then she gets up and she tries to pretend like, She's going to do something. She had three and a half years. And by the way, they have another five months that they can do something, but they yeah. won't do anything. It's all talk. She's yeah. incompetent and he's incompetent. And frankly, I think that she's more incompetent than he is. And that's saying something because he's not too good. Yeah, absolutely. Secure elections. And 
so so it's, it's it's just essential to have a real border or or, or we, we can't function as a country and our service you know our, our central services are, are being overwhelmed in a lot of cities um and uh, and i but i, I as, as we were talking about earlier i think uh having um a legal immigration pro process that is uh, smooth and efficient and done well, and I, you know, speaking as someone who is uh, a legal immigrant, like in, in in my opinion, actually, I'd say like probably most of the illegal immigrants actually are 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 actually good, hardworking people. That's my opinion, um, but some are not, and uh, and and you just have this sort of adverse selection process where, um, you know, if 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 somebody's uh, you know bad things coming here sooner because it's, I mean, it's a piece of cake to go rob, uh, you know, houses in uh, LA or New York uh, compared to other parts of the world. And, um, and, 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 and in a lot of places in America, if, if, if you try to stop the person who's robbing you, you'll be arrested. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's, it's right. I mean, what, what's happening with crime and our police are so good, but they're not allowed to do their job. But I have to tell you, Elon, they're I hate not. to say it because it's such a downer to say it. I hate to say it. I hate it. But uh, you have a lot of people that just shouldn't be. I think it's a much bigger number than you think. They're allowing, think again, right. they're yeah. allowing people from their jails. And if you were running one of these countries where they're coming from, you would have had all of them. As an example, uh, Venezuela, their crime is down 72%. They're taking their drug dealers. They're taking, frankly, their prisoners. They're emptying out their prisons. They're taking uh, their criminals, their murderers, their rapists, and they're they're delivering yeah. them into. But the... that's what that's what Castro did. Yeah, well, he did yeah. on a much smaller scale. Yeah. You know, it was a much smaller yeah. scale. But this is a massive scale because this is being done worldwide. But here's what's happening: crime all over the world is down. And wait till you see the numbers <laughs> that we have. You know, these. this is migrant crime. This is crime that's, that's going to be... Yeah. And I saw it today in New York where somebody was knifed, where they uh, raped the girlfriend of a man that stood there watching in New York in one of the shelters and uh, started sure. pulling out the knives and bad things happened today. But this is happening every day. These are rough people. These are people that are in jail for yeah. murder and all sorts of things. And they're releasing them into our country. And they're telling them, if you come back, we're going to kill you. We're going to give you the death penalty or kill you. So they don't want to come back. But these are rough people. Yeah. These, are, these are criminals that make our criminals look like nice people. Had nothing to do with the problem. Yeah. But she was well, the well, border czar. And you, people yeah, can't yeah. allow them to get away with their disinformation campaign. Now she's trying to say that uh, she, wasn't, uh, she wasn't really involved. And uh, the whole thing is horrible. She was totally in charge. She could have shut the border down without him. He didn't know what he was doing anyway, so he wouldn't have even known yeah. what happened. You could shut the border down. He yeah. wouldn't even know the difference. It's, it's simply not working. No, it's, it's I horrible. Mean, whether, whether, it's by, whether, it's by, whether it's a question of, of intention or competence, either way, we, 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 we don't have a secure border, and we have people streaming over like it looks like a world world war z zombie apocalypse at times and you know sometimes you you you, you got to sort of wonder like is it real or not so i you know because you see things and you're like is it real I, I so i went to the border at eagle pass and i saw for myself in texas and i was like okay it's real i'm like seeing this in real time i actually posted the video like just live i just i just flew there one day and just to see hey is this is this is this made up or real and i'm i'm just seeing people stream across the border and um, and I have to say, you know, at least the people that I saw did not look friendly. Um, you know, these, so these yeah, are people, people, people can look at my video and say, yeah. hey, you know, these people, these yeah. people look friendly. I don't look super friendly. So these are people that um, Elon would not be the same man if he had to walk across the street and look these people in the eye. These are rough people. These are really rough people coming across. And these are people that we don't want in our country. And, you know, the caravans are coming in and they're putting... And, and who's doing this are the heads of the countries. And the reason the numbers are much bigger than you would think is they're also taking their non-productive people. Now, these aren't people that will kill you. We have enough of them. But these are people that are non-productive. They, they are just not productive. I mean, for whatever reason. They're not yeah, workers yeah. or they don't want to work or whatever. And these countries are getting rid of non-productive people in the caravans in many cases. And I saw an ad by Kamala saying how she is going to provide border security. Where has she been for three and a half years? For three and a half years, yeah, no, no, this, we this, have 20 million this, this, people this, this, 
It's a terrible. Yeah, I think this, frankly, I, I think this is a fundamental existential issue for the United States. Um, and if we have another four more years of, of open borders, and it's going to be even worse with another four more years, it's going to be even worse than it's been for the past, uh, you know, three and a half years. Uh, I, I'm not sure we've got a country. You don't have a country. At that point. Elon, if they get in, you will have 50 to 60 million people from all over the world, not South America only. You know, we think of South America, we think of Honduras and El Salvador, Guatemala and Mexico, you know, the four. But it's not that. It's everywhere. They're coming in from yeah, everywhere. <laughs> and I had to stay in Mexico. Yeah, I think uh, this, is a, this is a super important yeah. point. Like, people, it's like, well, basically, when I went down there, I was like, well, where are people from? It's like, it's like almost no one was from Mexico. No, Mexico it's, left. It's just, it's just, it's just the, the border. Earth. It's just the border with Mexico. But the people coming in, it's, it's, it's Earth, the rest of Earth. <laughs> and, and America is, is only, you know, about four, four or five percent of the population of Earth. It, it would only take a few percent of the rest of Earth to overwhelm everything. In we're the already so, overwhelmed, Elon. It's we're overwhelmed. You had to see the news tonight about New York, New York, and I love that place. And what they're doing to it is horrible. What they're doing to it, and all the courts do is they yeah. try and focus on Trump. Okay, they, let's focus on Trump, who did nothing wrong. I complain about a rigged election, and they don't want to come back. But they won't come back. Sure. But but they're coming from Africa. They're coming from Asia. They're coming from the Middle East. They're coming from South America. Well, they're Earth. coming from Rest everywhere. Earth, basically. And there are a lot of really yeah, bad on ones. Earth. It's uh, just a, uh, it's just it's just an everywhere on Earth uh, thing, and it's just it's just not possible for the United States to absorb you know everyone from Earth or or you know even a few percent of the rest of Earth. It's just not possible. So, well, Elon, we're going to have uh, just to, that's, that's, uh, just yeah. to finish this up. We're going to have. The largest deportation in history. I beat Biden. Uh, he failed in the debate miserably. And, you know, some people said, oh, gee, it's too bad. It's too bad he did so badly. Or I did well in the debate. You know, the first night they said, wow, one of the people at CNN said, that was the greatest debate performance I've ever witnessed. And then two days later, they didn't talk about that. They just said he was bad. This was a coup of a president of the United States. He didn't want to leave. And they said, we can do it the nice yeah. way or we can do it the no. hard way. Yeah, no, I mean, they just took him out back behind the shed and basically shot him. You know, oh, what they Biden. did with this guy. So, and I'm no yeah. fan of his. And he was a horrible president, the worst president in history. And one of the reasons he was so bad, first of all, the Israeli attack would have never happened. Russia would never have attacked Ukraine. And we'd have no inflation. And we wouldn't have had the Afghanistan mess, if you think of it. Well, and we wouldn't have had Afghanistan. Yeah. But we think of well, it, we, yeah. we, we, you take a few of those events away and we have a different world. We would also have well, no, no, no you're, inflation yeah. was caused by oil. Yeah, no, no, no you, you, I think you make an excellent point here, which is that um, when other countries can, you know, that, that are, you know, are thinking about invading or doing bad things, uh, when they're thinking about that, they're thinking about, OK, who, what's the American president going to do? And are, do they fear the American president uh, or is there someone they, they do not respect? Or, and do not fear, and I think they they do they do they would they would rightfully be. I mean, but, you know, look, look at that the, the footage of the assassination. They're like, okay, you know, uh, President Trump is it like, don't mess with me. I mean, that's like. Whereas I think people are are not going to be, and they obviously have not been at all intimidated by by Biden. And they certainly will not be intimidated by, by Kamala. And you have to really think of that in the context of global security. Um, that's that's that if the if the American president is someone someone that like you know evil dictators are scared of, that makes a huge difference to the security of the world. So I had a good relationship with Putin, despite the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax that lasted for over two years. Just a hoax created by Hillary Clinton and. Uh, Adam Shifty Schiff, some just bad people, you know, just sick people. I know Putin very well. I got along with him very well. He respected me, and it's just one of those things. And he would, we would talk a lot about Ukraine. It was the apple of his eye. But I said, don't ever do it. Don't ever do it. You know, I shut down Nord Stream 2. That was the big oil pipeline, the biggest, I think, the biggest pipeline in the world going all over Europe. I shut it down. He actually said to me one time, he said, if you're my friend, I'd hate to see you as an enemy. I shut down his pipeline. The biggest pipeline, they were looking at that yeah. to fund. And this this pathetic president gets in there. 
And the first thing he did, one of the early things he did is he shut down, he, he shut down Keystone XL pipeline, which is our pipeline that would have employed 48,000 people, pipeline workers, shuts it down. That was, uh, you know, a massive job that Obama refused to allow. Yeah. I allowed it in my first week because it was jobs and it moved oil. And by the way, in a much more environmentally friendly way, it's underground. It's not a truck that catches on fire or a train that catches on fire. But think of it. He shut down the uh, XL pipeline, the Keystone XL pipeline. Yeah. He shuts that down and he approves the Russian pipeline. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make right? any sense. <laughs> it's like, it's inconsistent. Um, certainly the, but, but I mean, I, I think it's just worth emphasizing to, you know, to listeners the 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 the, the, the Im immense importance of of whether the United States president is intimidating or not intimidating, um, and how much that matters to global security, um, because uh, there's some real tough characters out there, and if they don't think the American president is tough, they will do what they want to do. I know every one um, of and them, and that puts the, that that put that it puts the yeah. whole world in danger. Elon, I know every one it's of them, big, and I know them well. I know Putin. Yeah. I know President Xi. I know Kim Jong Un of North Korea. I know every one of them. And let me tell you, people will say, "Oh, this is terrible." He said, "I'm not saying anything good or bad. They're at the top of their game. They're tough. They're smart. They're vicious." And they're going to protect their country, whether they love their country. They probably do. It's just a different form of love. But they're going to protect their country. But these yeah. are tough people at the top of their game. And when they see a Kamala or when they see uh, a Biden, Sleepy Joe, they can't even believe yeah. it. They can't believe this happened. The, all the stuff that you're seeing now, all the horror that you look at Israel, they're all waiting for an attack from Iran. Iran would not be attacking, believe me. You know, when I was there and I say it with respect, because I think we would have been good with Iran. I don't want to do anything bad to Iran, but they knew not to mess around. Iran was broke because I told China, if you buy from Iran oil, it's all about the oil. That's where the money is. But if you buy oil from Iran, you're not going to do any business with the United States. When I met with President Obama just before entering, you know, it's a sort of a ritual. I said, what's the biggest problem? He said, North Korea. I had that problem worked out very quickly. It was nasty at the beginning with Rocket Man and, you know, all the different things. Yeah. But all of a sudden, I got some, a call. Those, some, those oh. were some epic tweets, by the way. Yeah, they were, were. No, like, they were actually... epic. Everything he said. He said that he has a red button on his desk. I said, I have a red button on my desk too, but my red button is much bigger, and my red button works. I got along with him great. We yeah. were in no danger. It, but President yeah. Obama, it's because, President it's Obama respect, thought we were going to end up yeah. in a war, a nuclear war with him. And let me tell you, he's yeah, got a lot of true. nuclear stuff too. Exactly. He's got plenty of nuclear. Russia and China together. And if you're a history student, the first thing you learn is you cannot let Russia and China align. But then they also got, if you take a look, Iran, and they have North Korea. That's, you know, they call it the access of evil in the old days. You had the access of evil. Here we have a modern day access of evil. These are powerful countries, very heavy nuclear, which is the biggest threat. Yeah. You know, the biggest threat is not global warming, where the ocean's going to rise one one eighth of an inch over the next 400 years. The big and you'll have more you'll have more oceanfront property, right? The biggest threat is not that. The biggest threat is nuclear warming, because we have five countries well, now that yeah. have significant nuclear power, and we have to not allow anything to happen with stupid people like Biden. You know, Biden uh, did something with Russia. Uh, there was no chance of him ever going in. And when I left, and then I, then after I left, they started forming big armies on their on the border with Ukraine, right? And I looked at that, and I thought he was doing that because Putin's a good negotiator. I thought he was doing that to negotiate. But then Biden started saying such stupid things. For instance, he said that uh, it can be a NATO country. Now, Putin, if Russia, for for as long as there's been NATO, has said, we're never going to agree to that. And we go right up front and say that. And we did things and said things through this president with a low IQ, very low IQ. He had a low IQ 30 years ago, by the way, but now he might not even have a IQ at all. There is no, there's nothing on the board that goes this low. He said things that were so stupid that that, that war would have been 
That war had zero chance of happening if I were there. Zero chance. He was saying yeah. everything yeah. the opposite. Everything the opposite. And it's so sad because many more people have been killed in Ukraine than you read about. You don't read about how bloody it is and how disaster. Sure. Hey, look, just in the two armies, you lost a half a million people. But if you think about it, uh, Russia's gone, you know, Russia defeated Germany with us and they defeated Napoleon. You know, they've been around a long time. They're a big fighting force. Yeah, sure. And it's very unfair. And Ukraine now doesn't have enough men. They're now using young men and very old men to fight. And it's it, we're in a very bad position. And I'm not going to blame exclusively, but I can tell you I could have stopped that. And a smart president could have stopped that. It wouldn't have happened. Looking at the risk of global thermonuclear warfare, it's game over for humanity. And, you know, that's it's something that people have, I think, after the end of the Cold War, people have become complacent about. But they actually have forgotten that there are currently a lot of nuclear missiles that, 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 are, that, that have targeting parameters for the United States from 100%. other countries. And the fact that Absolutely, they can't sure. buy groceries because they don't have enough money to buy groceries, the inflation has killed them. Food prices are up 50, 60, even 100 percent in some cases. And this, this stupid administration allowed this to happen. And it's a shame. And that's the thing that people most care about, in my opinion. They care about the border a lot. And we discuss the border at great length. It's, it's nice to have yeah, a forum yeah. like this where I can discuss something. Uh, yeah. A, a, a lot of people just don't understand, don't understand where inflation comes from. Um, inflation comes from government overspending because the checks never bounce when it's written by the government. So if the, if the, if the government uh, spends far more than it brings in, that increases the money supply. And if the money supply increases faster than the rate of goods and services, that's, that's right. inflation. Um, so, so really, we need to have, uh, we, we need to reduce our government spending, um, and we need to re-examine. I think we, I think we need like a government efficiency commission to say like, hey, where are we spending money that's sensible? Where is it not sensible? Right. Um, and and we need to live within our our means. We we we're, we're currently adding, uh, I think, a trillion dollars to the deficit uh, every roughly right. every hundred days. That's right. Um, and you know the the interest payments on the national debt have now exceed the defense budget. It's a, on the order of a trillion dollars. It's interest, and it's and it keeps it keeps yeah. growing. I rebuilt our military, largely rebuilt our military. Did a great job on it, which was so important. You know, we had jets, we had fighters that were, uh, and bombers that were seventy years old, and we we did a great job in that. Gasoline. Now your cars don't require too much gasoline, so you know you're you have a good and you do make a great product. I have to say, I have to be honest with you. Uh, that you. doesn't mean everybody should have an electric car, but these are minor details. But your your product is incredible. But but the thank gasoline, you. Elon, is the 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 cost of energy. Not only gasoline, it's the cost of heating your house and cooling your house. That sure. has to come down. It it's gone up a hundred percent, a hundred and fifty, and two hundred percent, and. That has to come down. When that comes down, and we're going to yeah. drill, baby, drill. You know, they stopped drilling, and then they went back to drilling because they went, went back to the Trump policy. But if they won, the day after they get into office, we're going to, this country will go out of business because they're going to go to an energy policy that's not sustainable. Win. Sure. Um, well, just going, you know, back to this, like the this 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 basic thing, which that people try to make it sound complicated, but it's not. But inflation is caused by government overspending. Right. Um, would would you would you agree that that we need to take a look at government spending yes. and 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 have perhaps a, a government efficiency commission uh, that that just look, tries to make the spending sensible and so the country lives within its means, just like a, just like a person The does. waste is incredible, and it's it, nobody negotiates prices. One of the first documents they asked me to sign, a general walks said, sir, would you please sign this document? And what is it? Air Force One. That's with Boeing, which is basically two planes, two 747s. And the price was $5.7 yeah. $5. billion for two planes. Now, wow. now they're highly sophisticated. <laughs> That's insane. They're even nicer than your plane, okay? But much more sophisticated. They're very, I won't say what's on it, but they got a lot of stuff on it. Anyway, but it's 5.7. Sure. That's, that's a crazy it's number. It's a crazy number. But I said, I'm not going to pay 5.7. I'm not going to do it. I said, who made the deal? Obama and his people. I said, well, then I know the deal's no good. I'm not going to do it. And over a course of about four weeks, by my saying I'm not going to do it, I got the price reduced by $1.6 billion for the exact same plane, other than we had a nicer paint job, if you want to know the truth.
but I saved it by $1.6 billion for the exact same plan. And, and you can now take that and multiply that out times thousands of other exactly. items. Multiply and, it by yeah, a billion. The numbers are and, yeah. astronomical. Yeah. I agree with you. Well, uh, I mean, if so, so I mean, I mean, I, I think it would be great to just have a government efficiency commission that takes a look at, uh, at at these things and and just ensures that the taxpayer money, the, the taxpayers' hard-earned money, is spent in a good way. Um, and and I, and I'd I'd be happy to help out on such a commission. I'd if, love it if it were formed. Well, you you're the greatest cutter. I mean, I look at what you do. You walk in and you just say. You want to quit? They go <laughs> yeah. on strike. They, I won't mention the name of the company, but they go on strike and you say, that's okay, you're all gone. No, Isn't you know. <laughs> it amazing to you as a businessman that they can even survive? Like Illinois, so many people are leaving and you wonder, how do they survive? I mean, how do they survive? Uh, I saw where you left California and you moved to Texas. Texas does a great job. Uh, but, you know, yeah. I mean, I just wonder, how do these states survive when big businesses, a, a big oil company just left California, as you know, and they moved to Texas, how do these big states survive when they lose so many businesses and their taxes are already really high? You know, their taxes are among the highest taxes. Yeah. You, you almost wonder, how do, they, how do they continue on? And in many cases, the governors don't do a good job and they're crime-ridden places. You wonder, how do they continue to just go on? It's, it's not, it's well, not I, a good I think, situation. I think I mean, I think the thing that's the only thing that's going to force some of these states to change is if they risk bankruptcy and they're not getting bailed out by the federal right. government. Right. Well, that, you're gonna, that's you're the only thing that. that's going to get them to change. You remember the area yeah. in California where they had that, where I guess uh, somebody had sticky fingers and they stole a lot of money, and uh, they went into a, a form of chapter, and it was very nasty yeah, yeah. for a period of time. But now it's probably the most popular place in all of California. So, so you know, at some point. Something like that may have to happen. But the problem is uh, you can't penalize people that loan money to the state when you have incompetent people like a Pritzker. Look, the family didn't want him in the family business. And uh, then he ends up being governor of Illinois. So, you know, what, is he going to be Is he going to be a great governor? And, uh, you know, you, you have people. I could name every one of them. I got to know every one of yep. these. And some are very good and some are just horrible. Well, I think that I mean that larger point here too. You know, as, you, as you're saying, like the you know, a lot of people are concerned about the economy. A lot of people are concerned about inflation, and inflation is effectively a tax on people that 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 save money yeah. and 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 for people that are working day to day. It's 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 just a, it's just a form of taxation, um, and uh, and if if we can solve the government spending problem, we'll solve the inflation problem, which means people will have a better standard of living, yeah. and that's that's a really big well, deal. Well, the people that got hurt um, worst are the people that did it the way they were taught to do it. And we're going to bring those people back and help those people. We've got to get the prices down. You know, when I look at bacon costing five, four or five times more than it did a few years sure. ago, when when you look at some of the food products and, and groceries, those people go, they can't believe it. They used to be able to buy a whole cart. And today, you know, a lot of people just don't have the money. They go in and they can't buy anything. They they look at, yeah, it's, but, it's sticker it's, shock. I, I they it's, call it sticker yeah. shock, right? I think it really just comes, like I said, I think it just comes down to, to, to really, I guess, to really two, two things, which is, is that if, if you solve government overspending, you solve inflation, which improves living right. standards of the of the, the average person. And then and then if, if you uh, deregulate, like have sensible regulations, so because a lot of the, re the regulations are nonsensical and, and cause uh, the cost to be extreme for no reason. Um, and the, the, but unless you've got effective deregulation, like Reagan did, did a great job on deregulation in the 80s. But it's been 40 years since we had an, right. anyone really. I mean, in, during your administration, we, we made some progress. But I think uh, there's an opportunity to make, I think, radical progress with sensible regulation. Um, and, yeah. uh, and 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 if, if well, if Elon, was, we those two things, yeah, operating plants and. You know, so you sort of can't get away from it at this moment. I mean, someday you might be able to. But I do hear we have anywhere from 100 to 500 years left. You know, much of it hasn't even been found yet. Yeah. But there are tremendous, like Anwar. I got Anwar in Alaska approved. Ronald Reagan couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. Everybody tried. Nobody could do it. I got it approved. Not only is it big for Alaska. I mean, you talk about economic development. That for the United States. I mean, that that is... They say bigger than Saudi Arabia or the same size and pure, really yeah. good stuff. 
And, you know, they end it. So I think we have, you know, perhaps hundreds of years left. Nobody really knows. But during that, uh, yeah. during that time, I, I mean, I, something my, my will come around that will yeah. be very good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and my, my estimate would be, you know, a little more aggressive than that. But it's, it's not the sort of like we're all going to die in five years stuff. That, that's obviously BS. Um, but I mean, my view is like if you just look at sort of the past per million uh, that increments every year, you know, you get sort of two or three parts per million every year of, of CO2. Uh, I mean, my, I, I think some of that, it, it's problematic if it accelerates, if you start going from two or three right. to, say, five. And then there may be some situations where uh, you get uh, a step change increase in the CO2. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I think you, it, we, don't, we don't want to get too close to 1,000 uh, ppm because, like, that's, that's actually makes it uncomfortable to, 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 to breathe. Like just existing in, in 1,000 ppm CO2 is, is uncomfortable. That's, that's like a, it, it, that's considered like an industrial hazard. Right. <laughs> just, so, so it's, you know, that it's, that's, that's actually, you start getting headaches and stuff. So it's, even, even without global warming, it's not, it's not comfortable to live. So you don't want to get too close to that. But I, I mean, I think we've got, I, I think we want to just move over and like, and, and if, if, I don't know, 50 to 100 years from now, we're, um, yeah, we're, we're, I don't know, m mostly uh, sustainable. I think that'll probably be okay. Um, so it's 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 not like the the house is on on fire immediately, but it, it I think it it is something we we need to to move towards. And on you know on balance, it's probably better to move there faster than slower. But but like, like I said, without vilifying the oil and gas industry. Uh, and, and, and without causing hardship in the short term, I think this can be done um, with without, you know, but people can still have, you know, a, a stake and they can still drive gasoline cars. Yeah. And, they, you know, it's 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 OK. It's like it's not I don't think we should vilify people for it, but I think we should just just generally lean in the direction of, of sustainability. Um, and uh I actually think solar is, is going to be a majority of, of Earth's uh, energy generation uh, in the future, and it's certainly trending that mm -hmm. way. And and so you get the solar power, um, combine that with 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 batteries. So uh, because obviously the sun doesn't shine at night, and uh, and then you use that to charge the electric cars, and you have a long term sustainable solution. And you know that's that's what Tesla is trying to move things towards. And I think we've made a lot of progress in, progress in that regard. But when you look at our cars, we we we, we like we don't believe that environmentalism, that caring about the environment should, should mean that you have to suffer. So we make sure that our cars are, are beautiful, that they drive well, that they're fast, they're, you know, sexy. I mean, they're, they're, they're cool. In fact, literally, I mean, the sexy joke, Model S, Model 3, Model X and Y spells out sexy. It's probably the most expensive joke out right. there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I just, I don't know, I like cheesy humor, you know, so, um, and, but, but I'm, 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 I'm a big fan of like, let's have an inspiring future and let's yeah. uh, let's work towards you know a, a better future, and 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 we can do so without demonizing. Right, people. I'm um, I'm okay. You know, you know it's very interesting. Uh, you use the word global warming, and today they use the word climate change because you know you have some places that go up, and you stuff. so they were getting themselves in a little trouble with the the word global warming because not every place is warming. Some places are going the opposite direction, but five countries and getting more. You know, China is much less than us right now, but they're they're going to catch us sooner than people think. They're way lower. Russia and us are number one, and I mean, we're sort of tied. And China is far behind, but they're developing at a level that, you know, you're not surprised to hear very fast. It's going to, they'll end up catching up, maybe even yeah. surpassing. But to me, the biggest problem yeah. is not uh, climate change. It's not, and, and, and everything's, you know, a problem, but it's degrees. To me, the big problem is the uh, nuclear power. The power of nuclear is so great. You have to, because this is no longer army tanks going back and forth and shooting at each other. This is yeah. a level of destruction and power that nobody's ever seen before. Yeah, and actually, it, 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 there's, the, there's the bad side of nuclear, which is a nuclear war, very bad side. But there's, there's also, I think... Um, Nuclear electricity generation Absolutely. is underrated. You're right, um, and it's actually you know people have this fear of, of nuclear um, nuclear electricity generation, um, but it, but it's actually one of the safest forms of electricity generation. It's it's, it's just a huge misunderstanding, um, and uh, if you look at the injuries and deaths you know caused by say I mean I'm not going to try to pick on coal mining, but just any kind of mining operation. Right. 
Um, and uh, you get this certain number of, of, of injuries and deaths per year. Um, and you compare that to nuclear, nuclear is actually uh, way better. Um, so it's, it's underrated as, a, as an electricity source. And I think it's, it's something that's worth reconsidering. But there's so much regulation that people can't get it done. Um, so that, you know, maybe they'll have to change the name. It, you know. The name is just, it's a rough name. There are some areas like, yeah, it's rough like name. when you see what happened. To, good, good bad branding. Right, the branding. We'll have to rebrand it. We'll have to give it a good name. We'll name it after you or something. You know, um, <laughs> no, it has a, <laughs> hey, it has a branding problem. You know, when you see what happened. <laughs> it does have a branding problem. You, when you see what happened in Japan. Like I, people were asking me in California, you know, are we worried about like a nuclear cloud coming from Japan? I'm like, no, that's crazy. It's it's actually it's not even dangerous in Fukushima. I actually flew there and 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 ate locally grown vegetables on TV to prove it. Um, you know, uh, Hiroshima and, uh, and Nagasaki were, were bombed, but now they're they're like full cities again. So right. it's, it's well, really right. not that's something right. that you know. That's um, right. So it's, it's not it's not as scary as people think, basically. Yeah. But, um, Let's see. I mean, I mean, are there some other topics we should touch on? Um, oh, you know, like l lawfare. I think you know well, we, we need to be concerned about what they've done um, to this country. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Well, we just won the big I case mean, in Florida. One of the top people from the Justice Department went in, ran Manhattan, ran the state. The Letitia James deal was run by a person from the Department of Justice, Biden. They've never done this before, sure. and they set up a very bad precedent. It, it's it's called lawfare, warfare. It's uh, yeah. it's a terrible thing and never happened in our country. It does happen in banana republics and third world countries, but it's never yeah. happened. And you really, it's, it's important for the, for the public that may be listening to this to say, to look at uh, Kamala's track record, you know, uh, before the last like month and say, uh, is that a track record you agree with? Um, and I think if you're an independent uh, moderate, you definitely would not agree with it. Um, because it is a, her, her behavior has been far left, and we're seeing just an overnight propaganda attempt to rewrite history and make it sound like Kamala is moderate when she, in fact, is is not moderate. Um, well, her uh, so her running that... mate uh, approved, signed into legislation, tampons in boys' bathrooms. Okay, now yeah. that's all yeah, that's I weird. have to hear: tampons <laughs> in boys' weird. bathrooms, and that means she believes yeah. in that too. I mean, yeah, she not, she picked okay. this guy. Because he was the closest to her. A lot of people thought she'd pick sort of the opposite, but she picked an anti Israel, radical left person. But she is far worse, they say, than Bernie Sanders. If we have her as a president, if we have a Democrat at this moment as a president, I don't think our country can survive. I, th I think it's, I think it's a, a massive, I think, I think we're in massive trouble, uh, frankly, with, with the Kamala administration. And that's my honest opinion. Um, and uh, and I, I think uh, I think really it's essential that that uh, you win for the good of the country uh, for this election. And that, I mean that's understating my opinion. Um, now you, you know <laughs> you, you, may, you may have seen this, but I, I got a letter from the the, the EU Commission like saying uh, you know to not have disinformation on the like during this discussion that we're having like and. You know, there's like there's there's a lot of attempts to do censorship, and to force censorship even on Americans uh, from other countries. And um, you know, what do you think about that? Well, I know the uh, European Union very well. They take great advantage of the United States in trade, as you know. We uh, through a different forum, NATO, uh, we protect them, and yet uh, if. You build a car in the United States, you can't sell it in Europe. You just can't sell it. It's it's impossible. Uh, the same thing with our farmers. Our farmers find it very difficult to do business. You know, we have a deficit with them of $250 billion, which people don't know. It sounds so nice, the European Union, but let me tell you, they're, they're uh, not as tough as China, but they're bad. And I let them know it. And that's probably why they notified you. No, they don't treat uh, our country well. We defend them. You know, uh, with Ukraine, so we're in for 250 billion, and they're in for about 71 billion, and they have the same size. It's if you add up the European nations that you know for, in terms of an economy, it's about the same size when you say as us, and they're in, yeah. and 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 they're in much greater risk. I yeah. went in and I said, yeah. you got to pay up. If you don't pay up, we're not going to defend you any longer. I took a lot of heat, but you know what happened? Billions and billions of dollars came flowing in.
And yeah, you know. I, I think I think a lot of the public isn't isn't aware of the fact that the United States pays a disproportionate share of of the NATO expenses. And then um, we get taken like, advantage look, of on trade. So think about yeah, it. Yeah, well, I mean, the point of NATO is defending Europe, and it's uh, you know. <laughs> It, it's like then okay, well, why why is the United States paying disproportionately more to defend Europe than Europe? That doesn't make sense. That's unfair, um, and that that is an appropriate thing to address. Well, um, you know, when you talk about so, cost cutting and savings and everything else, you know, I was talking about the difference from the people within and the enemies on the outside. In many cases, the people from within are more dangerous for our country than the Russians and the Chinas. If you have a smart president, you're not going to have a problem with them. You're going to make, you're going to do things. Yeah. Now they've taken advantage yeah, of absolutely. us incredibly, but you're going to do things with the right person. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think, I think it's obvious that you're, you're, you know, a believer and an advocate of, of free speech because during your first term as president, you were attacked relentlessly every day, often very unfairly with false, you know, with, with false attacks, and and you didn't try to shut down the media. You didn't try to. Uh, in, inhibit their freedom of speech. And I think that says a lot. Well, the good thing is that you and I have, and some people, very few, uh, we can get the word out. Although sometimes it's hard because they don't want to print it, you know, like like we're having a great conversation right now. Kamala wouldn't have this conversation. She can't because she's not smart. No. <laughs> you know, she's not a smart person, by the way. She can't have this conversation. And Biden, we don't even have to talk about it. I mean, he couldn't have this conversation. He he would have given up on the first half of a question. He would have walked out. He would have said, where am I? Where am I going? So anyway, but yeah. uh, no, he wouldn't have this. That's true. Not a lot of people would have this conversation. But, you know, we cover a lot of territory. But the beauty is that, you you know, we can have a conversation. And I, yes, I'm able to get it out without because I get treated unfairly. <laughs> this is, a, fairly this by is a really big point. You can actually have a conversation. <laughs> With you, yeah, it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> and you can't have a conversation with Biden or Kamala. It's like not, uh, it's not possible. Yes, yeah, sure. um, so it, it, this is like talking to an NPC. No. So it's just impossible. Well, but think um, of it: we need a man or person who's unbelievably sharp in order to stop all the nuclear danger and all the dangers that I'm talking about. And I got along with all these. You know, I got along with Kim Jong Un. We had dinner. We had everything, and he he really like me, and I got along with him really well. By the way, he's he's the absolute boss over there. You know, a lot of people said, oh, do you think he really... Uh, let that's let for me sure. tell you, I <laughs> saw things that you don't want to know about. He is the boss. But you know, we had a good relationship, and and he doesn't like uh, Biden. He considers him a, a stupid man, he said. He's a stupid man. Well, at least he speaks his mind. But, you know, in this country, you're not sort of allowed to say it, but I guess you are. You should be allowed to say it yeah. if it's true. But we need really... We need smart people, and we need people that have an ability to lead. And she doesn't have that ability. Can you imagine? Now, you know Chairman yeah. Xi very well. Can you imagine her and him negotiating or no, even silly. standing it together? Um, it, it is The whole concept yeah. is ridiculous. She is terrible. She's terrible. But she's getting a free ride. I it saw was, a picture of her yeah, yeah. on Time magazine today. She looks like the most beautiful actress ever to live. I, it was a drawing. And uh, actually, yeah, yeah. she looked very much like a great first lady, Melania. She looked, she looked, <laughs> didn't look, yeah. she didn't look like Camilla. That's right. But of course, she's a beautiful woman. So we'll leave it at that, right? Yeah. Well, you know, maybe like I think part of what you know, people in America want to, you know, people in America want to want to feel excited and inspired about the future. They want to feel like the it's future true. is going to be better than the past, and that this that America is going to do things that are greater than. Uh, we've done in the past, reach right. new heights that make you proud to be an American and uh, and, and excited about the future. Um, they want and, the American uh, you know, dream this... back. The, you know, they want the American dream back more important than anything else. It's it's like you don't have that today because the people, they've been just sucked. They see incompetent people running our, you know, the the Biden thing is very interesting. People just found him to be incompetent. And when I debated him, I was like, is this for real? It was. Yeah, it's just it's, it was just absurd. Um, but I mean, I, I think there there are like you know some some you know grand projects that 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 we we could do. I mean, I think like you know we we could we could build a base on the moon. We could send American astronauts to Mars. We we, right. we could uh, build, build build high speed connections yep. that are you know more advanced than anything else in the world between our cities, so people have fast transport. Um, 
you know, we, we, it's possible to so, uh, solve traffic with tunnels. Um, right. we, we've, we've, you know, we've already made prog great progress in Vegas doing that. And, um, you know, and, 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 and just do things that are exciting and inspiring and make the future feel like it's better than the past. Well, I saw and, what like, you did in uh, Vegas, and I'll tell you, it was amazing. I, I got to see, I took a big glimpse at it, and it's incredible what you, you know, it's incredible. And you could do that all over. You could do that all over. It's, uh, it's deep. Yeah. You don't even need much structure, you know, assuming you're in the right areas. No, it's, it's, it's straightforward. It's amazing. Um, so uh, and and uh, like uh, I think we could do some some things that like like China's got incredible uh, high speed rail between its cities, but I think it's actually possible um, uh, with 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 tunnels if, if if with deregulation with with an ability to actually where it's like legal to, to to actually do the tunnels. Then you could have high speed uh, uh, tunnels that are actually better uh, than 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 anything else in the world for high speed transport between cities, and that would be something that. You know, Americans can say, "Wow, okay, we've we've got something that's cooler than anyone else in yeah. the world." That's that's the kind of thing that makes you proud to be an and American. And much safer than surface uh, trains, where there is a danger there. You know, with people, with crazy people, yeah. it's much safer, much better. Uh, and you know, it's sad because I've seen some of the greatest trains. I I find it fascinating, and I've seen the systems and how they work, and the bullet trains they call them, I guess, and they yeah. they go unbelievably fast, unbelievably comfortable, with no problems. And we don't have anything like that in this country, not even close. And it yeah. doesn't make sense that we don't. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, and I, I, I think also like the, there's, you know, I just, I, I'm just kind of hopping on the excess regulation, but I think something that, um, that I think people can generally understand is that what happens with laws and regulations is that they just there's more and more of them every year, and unless there's a process to clean them up, eventually everything becomes You're illegal, right. and and that actually sl sl it slows down the development of new technologies. I mean, if you take the sort of like I think we, we there's, there's there's room for some reform at the at the FDA yeah. Uh, for yeah. uh, improving the speed with which we uh, you know approve uh, drugs that that could help uh, save lives and improve people's yeah. lives. Um, and, I worked uh, very and, hard on that. You know, you know that, we got that down yeah. to a, to the lowest number ever, and we got uh, therapeutics approved in the FDA that people can't even believe the speed. But I I took them on. I I don't think they like me too much, but I got things approved. I say that so it's uh, it's <laughs> yeah. even more of an well, honor to yeah. have your endorsement. I know how strong you feel about it, but you know when you think of her. Uh, San Francisco, 15 years ago, I had a great friend, Bob Tish. He said it's the greatest city in America. And now it's you, it's not it's almost not livable there. And California, likewise. And she was involved in the destruction of San Francisco and the destruction of California. And she will be involved in the destruction of our country if people are so unwise as to elect her. And I hope that doesn't happen. And I hope the elections are going to be run honestly. And... We're going to turn this country around. We're going to we're going to do things that, and we can do it fairly quickly. And we have to get rid of the criminals that have been, you know, given to us by other countries. As they laugh, they laugh yeah. at us. They think we're stupid to accept these people. These are radical, stone cold killers in many case cases and terrorists, and they're in our country by the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, and we have to take yeah. them out. Yeah, I mean, if if I could summarize it, perhaps you know, I think. These are issues that I think most people in America uh, would would agree with, which is that we want safe and clean cities, we want secure borders, uh, we want sensible government spending, we want to res uh, restore res both the perception and reality of respect in the in the in the judicial system, just, you know, stop the lawfare, um, and uh, and I think that that's like and how are the how are those even right-wing positions i think those are just that's, that's just common sense and and that's uh i mean would you agree with that 100 percent. i i don't understand you know the whole they call it progressive they don't like the word liberal anymore but call it liberal or progressive i don't understand how somebody could say that it's okay for them to empty prisons into our country and again i told you their crime yes, rates all over the world way. are going way down which makes sense in fact the next time what we'll do is if Something happens with this election, which would be a horror show. We'll meet the next time in Venezuela because it'll be a far safer place to meet than our country. OK, so we'll go. You and I will go and we'll have a meeting and dinner in Venezuela because that's what's happening. Their crime rates coming down and our crime rates going through the roof. And it's so simple. And it's, you haven't seen anything yet. 
because these people have come into our country and they're just getting acclimated. And they don't know about being politically correct law enforcement or lack of law enforcement. And our police, I, I have to just end with this, we have great police, we have great law enforcement, but they're not allowed to do their job. They have to be able to do their job yeah. without being destroyed. Well, absolutely. And, and it's, it's obviously demoralizing if you're a police officer risking your life uh, to, you know, to, and, you know, to arrest uh, violent criminals who could kill you and do kill you sometimes. Um, and then you, you arrest the violent criminal and, and then the, the DA, you know, doesn't prosecute and, and that's let the guy out. Yeah. Well, then like, why, why should a police officer risk their life uh, to arrest a violent felon. Well, even worse, if, if there's, Elon, if nothing's going to happen. Even, even worse, they prosecute the police officer. <laughs> they they go after it and they prosecute the police officer and they take away his pension. They take away his yeah. job. He loses his family. He loses his house. Well, I I, th I thought it was very telling, like incredibly telling, that you know when that there was a case where uh, you know a, a, sort of a gang of thugs beat up. Uh, police officers, I think it was in Times yep. Square in New York, and 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 then nothing happened to those guys. They were they were let out zero bail, and uh, I think a bunch of them were given free tickets to California. Well, what is the, I mean that that is that is a that is a gross indignity against the United States, and and that's how I mean this is insane. Like, have we lost all pride? What, what that how can such a thing be allowed to occur? I've never seen anything. You know, we see where they get shot. It's a very dangerous profession, but it's something they're very proud of and they want to be able to do their job. But I've seen them get shot. I've seen a lot of things. But I've never seen where these guys are standing in the middle of a big street, everybody watching them, and they're literally boxing, like punching, stand-up fighting, a police officer. There were two of them. And yeah. you had about six yeah, of yeah. these guys, and they're punching the hell out of them. And in their own country, they would be dead if they did that. They'd be shot. Yes. They would be shot instantly. And, you know, they come from these countries, and it's taking them a while to realize that we don't do that in this country. But in their own country, yeah. if they stood on a street and had a fight with a police officer, they would be shot. There's no political correctness. And it's such a sad, yeah, it's just, it's such a sad thing to see. And that's the reason you we, have yeah, crime, we, by the way, yeah. because we don't do anything about yeah. it. Yeah, we we just cannot have a situation where our police officers are beat, beaten up on camera uh, by you know a, a, a gang of illegal immigrants, and then nothing happens to 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 the the guys that beat beat up the cops. I mean, and they're let out. This is unacceptable. Well, we're going to change it, um, and we're going to get them out of the country. You know, when I first uh, got involved, they said you couldn't get them back to these countries. You couldn't take them back. In the case of uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, some others. You couldn't get it back. And I said, really? Oh, you can't get it back. Because under uh, Obama, he couldn't get him back. They'd put up, they'd fly him in, and they'd put planes on the runways in these countries so you couldn't land the plane. They'd bring him back. And the general told me, the generals told me, sir, we can't bring him back. The countries won't accept MS-13 gang members. They won't accept him. And I said, really? How much do we pay these various countries in terms of economic aid, which is also somewhat ridiculous? And the answer was $750 million. I said, good. Tell them they're in default, they're delinquent, we're not going to do, we're not paying them anymore because they won't accept yeah, it. And you know what happened? They all called me, yeah, every yeah. one of them. They said, we would be honored to take them back, sir. We would be honored. It was so easy. But it's one of those things. And we got it back. We took in so many, you know, MS-13 is probably yeah. the worst gangs in the world. They're the most vicious, violent. We took them out of here by the thousands and got them out of here. And their countries took them back. And because I said, you're not getting any more economic aid. And once I said that, they were nice. They wouldn't take them back for Obama. Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't take them back for anybody. And now we have a problem because we have this guy. And they, again, they don't take them back anymore with the Biden because they don't respect him. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's just it's just got to it's just got to be done. We we just can't can't have uh, you know, whether they're citizens or not citizens. We can't have. Because they won't pro prosecute citizens either, not not just not just legals. So, uh, that, that if it's you, you can't have violent, you know, repeat violent offenders that are not in, uh, that 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 don't get um, incarcerated. That's right. Because they will uh, they will obviously, by definition, com continue to uh, to to uh, you know hurt people. And 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 I I think where part of this comes from is that there's. Um, 
and I, you know, I do sort of consider myself liberal in some ways. I mean, I, it's just that you want to have empathy for right. people. Obviously, you want to have empathy for people. I totally agree with that. You want to have empathy, but you also have to have empathy for the victims of the criminals. And if, if you if you just have empathy for the criminals, it's it's actually shallow empathy. It's not real. You're not thinking. You're not. You you have one layer deep uh, empathy. You got to say like, what if, if you don't incarcerate this person? Who are they going to uh, hurt? Who are they, they might kill someone. They might rape, rape someone. If, if you don't incarcerate them, you have to have empathy for the victims. And there's a lack of empathy for the victims of the criminals and, and too much empathy for the criminals. It doesn't make sense. I, uh, that's why you want to have deep empathy for society as a whole, not shallow empathy for, for criminals. Right. And we have to give our police officers the dignity and the respect that they deserve. And we have to let them do their job. They're, they can do a great job, but we have to let them do their job. And if we don't do that, we're, you know, it's, it's going to all, it's going to all disappear. There's never been a society like this where you're allowed to do anything you want and nothing happens. And I'm talking about violent crime and it's going to get more violent because these are really, really violent people. And we're going to get them out of our country and we're going to get them back to where, because they were sent here by the presidents and by the various people that run those countries. And I know every one of those guys and they're smart people. And they're streetwise people. And they really think that the USA is stupid. They think we're run by stupid people. And they happen to be right. But when I was there, we had no problem. We got them out. We took out thousands of MS-13 gang members. We brought them back. And uh, now, again, they, it's the same old story. We don't do it. And they actually gave them a big increase in aid. They, they raised it up to billions of dollars. And they get nothing for it. So, you know, it's... it's uh, I hope everybody's going to vote for Trump and we're going to get this country straight. Yeah. And I didn't need this. I, I'm like, I didn't need this. I had a very nice <laughs> yeah. life. I didn't need to, to go yeah, through yeah. court systems and go through all the other stuff and run at the sure. same time. I have to run. I have to go through fake trials with, in some cases, corrupt judges, totally corrupt judges. I didn't need it. I had a nice life. I have great locations. I have beautiful oceans that I have places. I, you know, I, I this was, but I felt it was important. And if I had to, do, if I had to do it over again, you probably think I'm crazy for doing it, actually. But if I had to do it over again, I would have done it over again because this is so much more important than me or my life. This is we're going to save this country. This country is going down, and these people are bad people that we're running against, and they're liars. They make statements. They 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 do things that are so bad. They they say they're going to make a strong border. They say they've been great on the border. And they've been the worst in history. They say they're yes, going to stop crime. And the, the, the facts speak for themselves. It, the, it's the facts so incredible. Speak for themselves. Like it's, it's gotten got to the point where, where people just don't even bother reporting crime in a lot of that's cities right. because they know nothing is going to happen. Um, you know, that's what I hear anecdotally from from people all the time. Um, so you know, it's just uh, you know my values. I'm just saying to, to to people out there, like my you know the things I that I think are important for the future is like we've got to have safe cities. We've got to have secure borders. We've got to have sensible spending. And and we have and, and we've got to have, de, you know, de deregulation, and right. um, so we can have a prosperous future. And then we, we want to have some exciting, you know, sort of moonshot projects that that people can get, get fired up about. And um, you know, that's that's the future I'm looking for. And um, you know, I'm pro environment, um, but I, but I'm I'm not against. Uh, you know, I'm not like in, I, I don't think we should vilify the oil and gas industry because they're they're keeping civilization going uh, right now. And uh, but I do think we want to move, you know, you know, a reasonable speed towards uh, a sustainable energy economy. Those those are my values, and 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 I think, um, you know, and 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 so I mean that's uh, why I'm su supporting you for president. You know. Well, so. I appreciate. It. We're going to make. We're going to give incentive to companies to come into our country, not to leave our country. We're going to be be giving tremendous incentives. We want companies to build here, not to build in other locations. And we want to create jobs. And again, it's about the American dream. 